Hi guys, this is an updated video of what I do during a typical hysterectomy where there's also a pelvic organ prolapse. The first part is a hesiolysis. I always try to restore normal anatomy before I get started with the hysterectomy, especially when I'm wanting to know where ureters are and I don't want to uh, incorporate them with the uterocircal ligament suspension. You can see the back of the uterus there. You, that uterocircal ligament I want to keep intact, so I do a dissection line higher. I start off with the small incision in the mesosalpinx, and I use a hook, and I pull it down in medial, and I take that vessel sealer extend, and I move it up and lateral. That takes it away from the ureter. It also keeps the tissue inside the vessel sealer as it works. It's a very efficient, um, advanced energy. It's definitely more efficient than traditional bipolar and scissors because it has a blade inside and does both at the same time. Notice how I do this portion last. That way I can keep that traction. At this point, I'm going to be in the outer one third of the round ligament. You can see that little tiny incision on the back of the broad ligament. That was created by hugging up against the round ligament. And I encourage you to do that. And I use my back of my hook to make this dissection occur. Now you can see the anterior leaf, make a little incision. And that allows me then to do that upward and medial traction with my hook, which allows me to then dissect out that broad ligament, re reducing the chance of getting the ureter. Notice that movement up and out. That's only when I'm, when I'm done with that, that's the only time I then cut the round. You want to take advantage of that round as a way of dissecting. Same thing happens on the other side. Try to pick an avascular area. We're going to pull the camera back. We use a 30 degree down. It just gives us more options. You'll see that perpendicular grasp on the uterine ovarian vessel. And in this case, we incorporated some of the uterine ovarian ligament. And then we continue out lateral. And you can see that round ligament. There'll be one more purchase on that to go right up underneath. But see that downward traction with the right hand, upward traction with the left. Creates a wonderful space. And then I can finish the salpingectomy last. It allows me to have really good visualization. As you can see, I don't really need an assist report when I'm doing this technique this way. It makes me more efficient. And in under five minutes, this part of the whole procedure is done. Clear down anterior, posterior, broad ligament on both sides. So we're going to finish that incision. You can see there's a little vessel that runs right underneath the round ligament. We want that window there. I actually kind of nick that little vessel a little too much. It doesn't bleed very much, but you want really the window where you can see that little gray round circle. And I go a little lateral to that right there. Little thing, no big deal. So I use the vessel sealer to take that to avoid any bleeding. But you can really see how efficiently you can dissect that broad ligament out by having that hook pulling up and medial and keeping that round ligament intact to do that until the very last minute. Now that I've done that, the patient, the person manipulating the uterus already has the uterus up, so we keep there. I'm marking just underneath the ureter because I, I'm going to do uterocircle vaginal valve suspension and I do not want to incorporate that ureter, so I want to just mark underneath it to remind me where that is. And then I want to mark the uterocircles now because they're hard to see later. Um, once you've done the hysterectomy and keep this intact this whole ligament you want to keep intact so i do something called the frowny face smiley face i do like a frowny face incision here as you can see and then it turns into a smiley face so frowny face to smiley face that allows me to keep it intact regardless how big the copotomy ring is then i do this parallel relief cut underneath the vessel so i can just slide the vessel sealer extend right up around the vessel. You're not going in the vaginal mucosa, you're just sliding it up around the vessel. It's super an efficient way of taking uh, vessels. The next step would be then to uh, go ahead and do the other side. And if you do it correctly, it works very well. You shouldn't have to force it, it should just slip right in. Now we can pull the uterus down and I always like to backfill. I don't care how easy the hysterectomy is, I backfill. You'll see the bladder back filling right now. And I use a technique where we use the Foley Sterile on the field and we use the striker suction irrigator and we just hook it up to it. And I have them and fill it till I feel like I got enough. And then when, as soon as I feel like the bladder is in a good spot, I'll say, 
drain that and there's a suction on there to bring it right back down. It doesn't cost me any additional time. It makes me so much more efficient and safe while I dissect the bladder off the uh, colpotomy ring. I want a lot of space below uh, where I'm going to make the colpotomy. As you can see there, that's the colpotomy ring. Then I do a relief cut just like I did underneath. There's some anterior vessels that go right along that 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. I use monopore energy only. And once I create that relief cut, I can use that vessel so extend to slide over the colpotomy ring. And I anterior, I like to go lateral seal without cutting, and then I go one width in and do a medial seal and cut. This is safer when you have those vessels under so much tension. I love the camera dab with the 30 degree. You just rotate and you can see around. I continue to do the same technique, that lateral seal, medial seal and cut. Always when you're using a big vessel like this, um, sealing a big vessel like this, you want that because you don't want it to fail. And the company uh, that makes all the vessels, so there's, they say the same thing. You shouldn't have it under tension. Cut current only, as we talked about, but you can see there is literally minimal collateral spread of energy, and it's really only in that vascular bundle. I'm going to go over to the other side and do the same thing, that relief cut underneath that vessel so we can slide that vessel ciliary extend. If you need to, you can switch out your instruments right to left, left to right. I try to limit that because it limits um, injury and um, it's more efficient, but if you're having a harder time getting there, you can do that. As we continue, you can see that pattern of lateral seal, medial seal, and cut. And now I'm going to just bounce off the colpotomy ring. My only advice while watching this video is I should have done one more time. You'll see why here in a second. Uh, I will go ahead and cut this here. And there's a little vessel left over. And you can see I cut through the lumen of that vessel. and That's going to ooze a little bit. It'll be taken care of when we close the cup. But for a better technique, it, it should have been done um, a little different. But you can see there's almost no blood loss. That fluid down in the pelvis was already there from the beginning of the case. I do use two V-lock sutures. They're nine inches long. This is CT1 needle, and they are an O, 180 day. I have recently switched over to this because I feel that the when somebody has a prolapse and you need better support, I want a longer lasting uh, suture that's larger. And when you look at the model of the general surgeons, they do not close fascia with anything lower than an O suture. And so I want to use an O suture to close the fascia on this. I know this is a vaginal mucosa closure. I guess you could use a 2O on the vaginal mucosa. There's a little bit of oozing coming from that vessel. So we're going to go ahead and just grab it with the needle driver and then you're pulling up there's less risk of injuring the ureter once i've gotten that cardinal ligament out lateral a nice healthy bite then i go a little more superficial and i'm just trying to get the vaginal mucosa and another thing i'm showing here is if you're hospital or you are cost conscious you can use the vessel ciliary extend as a grasper uh, the company doesn't recommend you do it because they don't have FDA approval and they can't guarantee that you can use the vessel ciliary again after grabbing metal. I, I think it's fine as long as you know that and you're careful with it. So I'm going to show a long bipolar grasper now, which is probably a preferred uh, instrument to use when you're closing the cuff. It's got a long tapered tip with some serrations on the end and you can really pull hard and get the perfect angle you're looking for. You notice how wide and deep I get that first bite. In the second bite I want to go ahead and do a little more superficial because I want the edges of that vaginal mucosa to literally evert and be kissing and you'll see that here in a second as I tighten that down. See how they're touching each other? It almost look like lips. Now we can finish closing the just the vaginal mucosa. And if you pay close attention, you'll see that I am not incorporating the pubocervical fascia or the uterosacral ligament or rectal vaginal fascia. This is really just vaginal mucosa. And on my second layer closure, we will incorporate that. So as the vaginal mucosa is healing, it will be healing under its own uh, 
suture line and there will be no tension from intra-abdominal pressure on it because the second layer closure. I'm gonna go down into the uterosacral ligament. We marked that earlier. You wanna stay away from the ureters. You know where your ureters are. The more cephalads you go, the further away from the ureter it gets. The closer to the cuff, the closer to the ureter. We then use an EA sizer vaginally to push on the, the pubic cervical fascia. Then we cut this suture and tie them together. These barb sutures don't have the barbs on them very long, and I'm using this as a supportive, suspensatory type suture. Now we can continue on, and you can see that uterosacral plication is pretty significant. The ureter is way off to the right. We're safely incorporating the uterosacral ligament without getting the ureter. And we continue with that EA sizer. Helps us see that pubocervical fascia. We get a nice healthy bite of that. And then really try to go deep and get as much of that posterior support as we can. We can do one more bite over here. We have to be careful on the angles not to get the ureter. But the ureter runs right underneath that vascular bundle there. And because we haven't had to use a lot of energy and haven't created a lot of char, we can really so much more effectively see all the different layers. Uh, one note is this patient probably could have um, had a coldoplasty and it should have been done before we started because look how well this vaginal support, support narrows that, that cul-de-sac there. And if you're going to do that, you want to do it now. You can see that your is way out of the way. I'm going to sew back. Um, so that I can tie to that other suture. Because once again, this is, needs to last a while. And I like those sutures, those um, knots to be buried. I don't want them to be exposed to bowel. So that's why I put it back there and then I will bury that knot. Uh, I, I think you have to be careful with all the V-locks so that you don't have small bowel um, issues. This is uh, a suture that I brought in to do a coldoplasty, and I had to really struggle doing that because I waited to the end to do the coldoplasty. I'm not going to show that right now, uh, but I did do an oophopexy as well, and the coldoplasty is done. You can really see the ureters out lateral, and you can really visualize that level one support there in the middle, how effectively we've reestablished good apical support using her own tissue. Thank you.